rectangle versus rectangle is a very simple test and it's usually called axis aligned bounding box test um, and it works in a similar way as the point inside rectangle except here we're going to test against spans on vertical and horizontal axis for both rectangles so let's go ahead and use the previous code from this tutorial except instead of a point we'll create a rectangle that is positioned at mouse x and y coordinates and I'll use 150 and maybe 100 and let's draw this rectangle let's call it rec just to make sure that we're not calling it point and let's keep it red I'll save this and refresh the browser and so now we have two rectangles and we're going to test for collisions between them in order to do that in code I'll delete this function that was left over from previous tutorial and I'll go right into rectangle source file and here I'll add another function which is rect inside so while in this function we had point inside and specified point coordinates to be tested in this function we will test a rectangle and it will be passed as rect the entire object so in here uh, which is the body of this function we will actually implement the collision detection test to perform this test we need to actually do four tests for the four spans uh, actually two spans on each rectangle uh, vertical and horizontal and so the first if statement will look something like this so we'll take the x coordinate of this rectangle and check whether it's less than the rectangle that's being passed plus rectangles that's being passed with and so this is our first test in the series and the second test is very similar where we're testing x variable but this time we need to add to this x the width of itself and compare it to the left side of the other rect and it looks like this and we have two more tests to do for exactly the same thing only on a different axis again we're testing this versus x plus rectangles width on the other rectangle and this rectangle plus its width whether it's greater than just the left hand side of the other rectangle that we're testing against doing this allows us to test whether this span lies within the other rectangle and it does this for both rectangles now this is the first test on the y-axis and it looks a lot like the first test for the X coordinate except here we're adding height and the final test for Y axis looks exactly like the second test for X axis except again we're using height instead of width and here of course we have rect Y so it's almost like a mirror of this one except on a different axis and if we implemented this correctly this should return true when both of the rectangles have indeed collided and if we ended up here in our function there is no collision because none of these tests have actually passed and I'll probably correct this a little by formatting them and for each axis and so let's go back into our game and see if this function that we added actually works and how we're going to do it is we're going to take rect inside rect and pass the first rectangle in here 
and if there's a collision we're going to draw both of these rectangles in let's say we're going to draw them both in red but let's make sure that we don't have any red rectangles to begin with so both of them will be blue and if there's a collision we will paint them red and so let's save this and see what happens so both of them are blue and let's collide nothing is actually happening and that's very common for first time tests and the error is here I have rect inside rect is not a function and so let's see how that is true inside rect so this is rect inside of course we I messed up the, the name it's rect inside and not inside rect so I got that in reverse so let's go back to canvas and refresh and as you can see our AABB test is working properly I can't go back all the way um, to the top of this box but I'm pretty sure it works and in order to fully demonstrate that let's actually move this a little forward to 100 pixels in both axes and so as you can see this test actually works from all directions and that was pretty basic test but this one used a lot in games like Pac-Man and some other ones obviously when the character is collided with a tile or something we need to do something about it whether to push the box away or prevent the player from going through a wall and things like that and so having said this we're going to use all of our library code that we have developed so far uh, in future tutorials and from this point on I think we have enough components to start actually making games because I have here sprite sheet, animation, mouse and keyboard controls, uh, the world representation for a tile world, uh, very basic at this point and all of this collision detection functions that we created over the course of past several tutorials and I think we don't really need this line anymore so I'm going to delete that and I think we have a really good starting point like a clean slate for starting your own JavaScript games I think this tutorial series covers some of the most frequently used collision detection cases for game development And as usual, you can download the source code by following the links on the screen. And in the future tutorials, we're going to start going through more advanced collision detection cases for developing a physics engine. And that will take a while, so don't be surprised if you don't see another video tutorial from me for another several weeks, maybe. But by that time I'll start uploading the next series with all of the new stuff that will help create a really good physics engine and start implementing that kind of stuff in your games in JavaScript on Canvas so I hope by that time you are still subscribed to my channel and I will see you in my future tutorial and you can also support creation of independent video game tutorials by submitting a donation. You can just go to the link that you see on the screen and I will see you in my next tutorial.